day two. Um, just been waiting for the sun to come out really. Uh, it has a little bit, but anyway, it's not quite as warm as it was at 8 o'clock when I first came out here. Uh, next job is to get that roof support out. I'm not going to video all of it because I need to crack on with it, but challenge might be getting the windows out. <laughs> I don't really want them dropping and broken glass everywhere, so if I can get them out intact, it would be quite nice. We'll see how we get on. <laughs> Taking a breather. I've removed three sections so far from the front and I think I can leave that and that. So in other words I've got a short shed <laughs> because beyond that post I've got more than enough room to put my vehicles in because bear in mind your boundary line is out there. So it would make sense to retain this and infill this front wall, I can do it with timber or whatever and uh, or maybe even make use of the old door because that's uh, a bit more robust than metal it's aluminium anyway or um, even roofing sheets, make a timber frame use roofing sheets one end and then just paint the whole thing um, it does have windows in it but I shall put vertical bars in there on the inside just stop anybody trying to break in through a window. But there's nothing actually wrong with that end of the structure. Because um, I've got absolutely nowhere to put my tools. And uh, if I decide later on that I want to demolish that, it's not much to cart away, is it, really? Anyway, all these um, panels on the outside, I'm going to be laying these all across here to level this side. And that will give me, if I can push my once I've cleared that, because that's more or less level that side, push my camper over here a little bit. I'll get me bug on that side. Still bags of room to get through. If I need to bring through timber or concrete or anything, I've still got plenty of room. And uh, short term, fence the end of this garden off. I don't need a gate because. Well, not in the short term, I don't, because uh, all my bins are out front. A lot of the neighbours here um, bring their bins out from the back, but uh, I can't be bothered with that. Just put it in the front garden. So, yeah, I'll sh I've got enough timber to make a fence that will board this up. And, yes, I'll be left with a load of crap in there. Um, but if I want to, because I should make the fence that I can just uh, disassemble it fairly easily, I'm going to put a met post in there. Um... And so if I need to, I can take the panels down, I can get a skip in, whatever, and I can put the fence back. And uh, that takes a lot of the pressure off me then. Yeah, I think that's right. Keep those two, back two sections. If I go inside, look. somebody's going to say, no, take it all down. My friend Hermie said, said that. He said, no, take the lot down. You'll regret it. Um, I don't think I will, actually. I come inside. Difficult for you to see, but two bays, that's quite a usable shed, isn't it? It's bigger than my wooden shed. I can get all my tools in it, out of the way, and unfortunately they're everywhere. They're in the conservatory, they're in the wooden tool shed. It's not ideal, I can't find anything. Whereas I could just rack this out and just put all my tools in it and be done with it. And keep things like this, my replacement fuel tank and uh, my cool box that I take away with me all my basic camper stuff and uh, all my tools will be in one place yeah I think that's the way to do this just keep this back two sections uh, and then it's not such a bother for me then because I'd never use it as a garage but as a shed mm. yeah so that means I've only got to take out two more sections and that leaves me the rest of the day to uh, remove these concrete posts. As long as I drag them down past this post, it's not going to affect vehicle moving that I've got to do over the weekend. And uh, it gives me a bit more time in the week rather than this sort of flat out demolishing a concrete shed. <laughs> well, garage. Um, 
Sorry, I'm waffling, but I'm just thinking out loud like you do. So, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. It makes sense. Uh, from what I can see, most of the concrete's in good order on this one. Uh, it's been treated with cement a bit here and there in the past. And then all I've got to do is shorten this guttering, just put an end cap on it. Mm. The more I think about this idea, the more I like it. Yeah, so initially this end of the uh, shed, as we call it, concrete shed, will be open until uh, I've got the fence up. Once I've got the fence up, then I'll, I've got... Oh, crikey, I'm not short timber. Look, it's just... I've got a garden full of it. So that would not be difficult to make up a frame um, to block that in. So that's what we're going to do. Mm. Yeah, that's put me in a positive frame of mind. Uh, tell you what, I'm, right, I've done three there. I've got one more slab to get out. That was a bit harder because they're cemented in each side, but I've got it moving. So I shall pull that out. And uh, I'm going to start stacking them here. There's nowhere really to put them. Um, but then later on today, when I think I've got enough, got far back enough, I can start really clearing this crap now and open it up and lay all these slabs down so I've got something to drive on. It's not ideal. I know it's not concreted, but it'll do me. There's pigeons up in these trees, you know. You can hear them. Sounds like they're rattling a plastic bag. I can only guess what they're up to in there. <laughs> Another thought when it comes to storing tools is um, <laughs> the last thing you want is them pinched. Well, bar drilling through the concrete then I want to get in there. The wooden door I suppose is a weak point um, but of course I've got all the angle iron from the roof strengtheners so I can make an angle iron frame to go in there and a steel door or again make use of the up and over door. It wasn't wire brushing down and painting. Um, I make an angle iron frame for it with an aluminium front and that would make a very secure door on there rather than this wooden one. This is good because I'm kind of reusing the materials I've got aren't I? I mean I've reused uh, all these panels or I will do because it'll all fill this. This is what's going to slow me up is digging out all this soil here but mm, I may short time, short term just get away with laying concrete on it I don't know. Might be able to lay the slabs on it. We'll see how that goes. Um, a little birdhouse. It's not in use. What kind of bird would get in there? Well, not many, would they? <laughs> how would he get in there? Does he come up and open the little latch? I think probably not. <laughs> hmm. We're in a long way now. Uh, judicial use of the angle grinder because these uh, supports have got bracing pieces between them which uh, also take the weight of the asbestos roof and uh, tie everything together but I've only got once I get this uh, support structure out I've got to take those out take the next one out and um, I'm pretty well done and I'll spend the rest of the time cleaning up. I'll end up with, <laughs> what will I end up with? About a quarter of a garage, a quarter of an open-ended garage. Yeah, save me a lot of work though. Right, keep going, just in case it does rain. It's getting towards the end of the day. Um, yeah, I could do a bit more, but uh, I think I'd wear myself out, to be honest. <laughs> And uh, a friend of mine has asked me to help him with some wallpapering tomorrow. It's actually the guy that dropped my camper off for me and uh, will be dropping off my beetle, best mate. Um, so anyway, I put this across tonight. It's a bit of uh, plastic netting. It's not going to keep anybody out, but it kind of separates the line and uh, might discourage one or two people not to just wander in. Anyway, we're on the 
fourth section there. And once I've got that out, and the fifth, we're done as far as the deconstruction of the garage. Uh, I've got two hole panels this side. It is a bit tight uh, with having this here, but it's not it's not impossible. Anyway, I'm going to conclude for today and uh, we'll be back to demolition of the concrete garage part three. <laughs> uh, I'll try and do a little bit in the morning. It'd be nice if I could get, say, this out and one more the other side. And then I've only got one each side. That'll be good. So all this timber... I've got some good 2x3s here. This would be all right for infilling the end of the garage and turning it into a shed. Yeah, it'll be very good, I think, when it's done. Um, my stepfather has uh, offered to help me move these concrete posts further down the garden so they're out of the way. Um, well, it saved me tripping over stuff anyway. But yeah, I'm very pleased with how it's gone. Uh, it is asbestos, as far as I know, but uh, I'm not going to change the ones that are already up there. They're all right, they're keeping the water out. I might actually just scrape it of moss and uh, seal it with a bitumen, something like that. And then into next week, uh, no, it'll be Sunday, in fact. I'll be clearing everything here, the whole lot so that I can get all these slabs down and get all this level and we'll get a spade and shovel clean up all this debris and uh, make it reasonably presentable and then on the Monday I will put a fence in across the end and then we'll be secure so that's it from Ralph's house as usual comment below uh, thumbs up or thumbs down uh, depending what frame of mind you're in and uh, I will see you next week. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.